Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and in this series, we're gonna be covering Apollo Client. Now, with Apollo Client, you can use GraphQL APIs. Now, we're gonna be doing so with React in a Create React app, so we're going to be querying from a real GraphQL API, and we're gonna be able to do all of the cool stuff that Apollo has to offer, like pagination, and optimistic UI, and a whole bunch of really basic stuff too, like just general queries and mutations, okay? So in this video, I'm gonna show you some of the technologies that we're working with and sort of why we're choosing and using what we're doing, and maybe a little bit about Apollo versus GraphQL versus React and how they all fit together. So let's get talking about that right now. Okay, so before we get started here, I wanted to give a little bit of an introduction to what we're exactly going to be doing in this series and a little bit of an introduction to GraphQL and Apollo, maybe giving uh, clearing up some of the distinctions between those two. So what we're gonna be doing in this series is we're gonna be building a blog from scratch using a GraphQL API. And we're gonna be doing that via GraphQL on the client side using Apollo Client. What we're not going to be doing is spending a lot of time on the API or the server itself. Now, there are other tutorials out there, and I certainly will be making one myself about how to create your own GraphQL API, but this series is just going to be covering the client side of things. Okay, that's an important distinction because we're essentially going to be consuming a GraphQL API that exists. Now, granted, we are going to create this in sort of a bare bones way ourselves, uh, however, that's not going to be the main focus here. Now, let's talk a little bit about GraphQL itself. What is GraphQL and how does it differentiate itself from the libraries that we use to use GraphQL? And a basic way to say this, GraphQL is just a specification for an API. GraphQL defines here's how it should look and work. And then you have various other libraries like Apollo or Relay to actually implement GraphQL. So even though the GraphQL spec here, this thing was created by Facebook, you don't have to worry about using some sort of Facebook licensing or library to be using GraphQL. In fact, we're going to be using a library called Apollo, which is built by the Meteor Developer Group to, well, actually get our client side GraphQL queries working. Now you can see some stuff that makes it look cool and maybe people have been talking about it like it's a bit of a buzzword. So what are the difference between an Apollo API and a just standard REST API? Now typically in a REST API, you hit a specific URL and that specific URL gives you back a specific set of data. And to get a different set of data, you have to hit a different URL and then another set of data, another URL. And then granted, you can have query parameters to change some of these things. Uh, the amount of flexibility it gives you is, well, only as good as the API. What's great about GraphQL is you have one endpoint. We attach to one URL API. And instead of hitting different APIs to get different data, we send what's called a GraphQL query over that same URL to get different sets of data back, okay? And that syntax that we use to write these kind of things, it sort of looks like JavaScript objects without commas and stuff like that. It's a little bit different. This is a GraphQL syntax, uh, but you're going to really, really fall in love with this system because for a lot of reasons, it's not only just easier to work with, but it's typed so that way you can be sure of the types of data that you're coming back, but it's also self-documenting. You get some really brilliant documentation tools out of this, and it's just easy to use to get all of the data you want back. I am such a huge fan of GraphQL. I did say it was the technology that is poised to blow up this and next year. This thing is going to be everywhere. Okay, so that said, we uh, I've talked a little bit about GraphQL itself. Let's talk a little bit about Apollo. What is Apollo? Now, I mentioned before that GraphQL is just a specification for working uh, with GraphQL, right? This is what GraphQL is, right? This is how it should work. To actually use GraphQL or, or attach to a GraphQL API, we need something like Apollo, which is a GraphQL client. Now, there are other GraphQL clients. There's a couple of smaller ones and another large one made by Facebook called Relay, but Apollo is seems to be the favorite 
uh, for a lot of reasons. And one of the things I love about Apollo is that they keep on updating constantly, which has made actually making tutorials for this very difficult because you always want to stay up to date on what's the latest. But what GraphQL and Apollo does is Apollo accepts the URL endpoint for your API and allows you to query that endpoint and get data back. It takes care of things like caching. It takes care of things like optimistic UI. It takes care of things like, well, you can do uh, subscriptions through this. There is so much stuff in Apollo here, and it works with all of the major libraries. Let's say you're a Vue person, an Angular person, or a React person. It works. It also works with native iOS and Android. This thing is awesome. I'm such a huge fan of Apollo, and that's why I choose to use it both in my personal projects along with the stuff on Level Up Tutorials. So that is GraphQL and Apollo. Apollo is the library itself we're using to interact with GraphQL, where GraphQL itself is simply just a specification. Now, what we're going to be doing in the next video is we're going to get the bare bones of our GraphQL server up and running. To do so, we're going to be using a new service called GraphCMS. I'm gonna go over a little bit about why I chose GraphCMS for this course and what it means for you moving forward. But at the end of the day, this course is not about GraphCMS specifically. and is not about getting a, a GraphQL server up and running. It is mostly about consuming an existing GraphQL server. Now, uh, this GraphCMS is just a great way to get one up and running very quickly. Okay, so we'll be talking a little bit more about that choice in the next video and talk about GraphCMS as we get set up with our very first GraphQL API using GraphCMS. So check it out as we dive into more of our actual GraphQL server with GraphCMS.